Project Scarlet's lack of VR. Is this truly a big blunder or more to do about nothing? Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please. So you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up because you know the deal, baby. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right. So this whole virtual reality thing, right, y'all, has blown up and Phil Spencer and Xbox's face. And they didn't anticipate this and I didn't either, but we are gonna talk about this, all right? But for those that are new to the platform, that are new to my content, let me explain to you how I'm gonna do this. On the medicine here, I like to break things up into three parts. Part one is the checkup, okay? Part two is the analysis of the situation. Then part three, I like to hit you with the prescription, okay? So first, let's, let's, let's get into the checkup. All right, so virtual reality is a more focused on game implementation this gen, this gen than others, right? Companies have plugged billions of dollars into this tech and they've even had feudal battles in court over stolen VR code. That said, the, few, the, the feature has not grown as many have hoped it would this generation. In light of this, Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, was asked in an interview with Survivor if it will be part of the Project Scarlet launch. In response, he said it was not a focus and some more what many would call unfavorable things <laughs> about the VR tech on console in general. Now he attempted to clarify it later, but the matter got even worse in his explanation as I will show you now, all right? So let's let's go through the timeline of this debacle and we'll get more into uh, our breakdown of the whole situation, right? So if you take a look here, okay, this is the article uh, Phil Spencer did with Survivor, and it says VR not a focus of Project Scarlet, says Phil Spencer, and he says here, quote, we're responding to what our customers are asking for, and nobody's asking for VR. He also says in the article that to him, VR is just like demo and it's tech. It is not, not anything serious and they are focused on serious stuff, which is upping their lineup for the Project Scarlet launch. So that got our, from the community, from the likes of Yoshida, and I'll show you this. Now this is a poor translation from Japanese to English, but I think we all can get the gist of what Yoshida was saying. He says in a tweet, in response to Phil's comments, we oftentimes work hard to make things that no customers are asking for them. In other words, look, if you're trying to be innovative, if you're in tech, you know what I'm saying? Like we are, Phil, you got to try things. You got to take risks. There are a lot of innovative things that we created that people didn't ask for. One that comes to mind is broadband, you know what I'm saying? With, your, with, with the OG Xbox, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people didn't ask for that, but that's something that Microsoft decided to run with and it worked to their favor. So, you know, I get where Yoshida's coming from, right? All right, but with that said, this is where, here's where the rubber really hits the road uh, with the supposed walk back. So, Fair, uh, Paris Lilly of Gamertag Radio, and big ups to them, and let me blow this up for those of you that are watching this. All right. He says, in, in response to a tweet, he says, I don't think the issue is Xbox focusing on building up their games lineup. It was the way VR was dismissed as a novelty, not worth pursuing when it's clear that there's a huge AAA investment by Valve, Sony, and Oculus. In my opinion, just say it's not our focus now, now, but we're leaving the door open. And here's where I think this became a problem. Phil responded. And he said, fair feedback. I've said publicly, I love how our industry has pioneered various things. For us, it's about our focus on our innovations right now. I've played some great VR games. I got to play Half-Life Alyx in the summer. Amazing. It's not just our focus with Scarlet. Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna break that down a little bit. Just, just, just bear with me, you know what I'm saying? With all that said though, is this truly a big blunder? Now on to the analysis, okay? So in order to break this down the way we need to, we need to talk two things. Number one, how important is VR to the gaming ecosystem? And two, how did this become such a big issue? Now on to the prescription. Okay, so how important is VR to the gaming ecosystem? Well, the argument can be made about what Phil said, um, that 
The problem is, is that, or one of the problems is you're gonna have an Xbox launch next generation at the same price likely as the PlayStation 5 with less capabilities, okay? You know what I'm saying? And secondly, it's just another foot in the mouth moment by Phil Spencer. And he's had plenty of them. And I don't know if this guy will ever get sick of them. You know what I'm saying? He's the Joe Biden of gaming. Let's be honest though. Having virtual reality tech at launch is not a deal breaker for the average gamer. And it doesn't spell life or death for the Xbox ecosystem. Phil Spencer is right. They need to up their gaming lineup. That needs to be the primary focus at launch. He was right in the general idea of his response to not having VR, right? Um, it, it, let, let's, let, let's be honest here. Matter of fact, Connect 2.0 has more units sold and a bigger install base sat saturation percentage than PlayStation VR does. If my numbers are right, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, in the year that, or or the little bit of time that, that Connect 2.0 was out, it had, uh, I think it was like 20 million units. Yeah, I think it was 20 million units, right? Um, and then it, it, it has a bigger install base uh, percentage-wise for Xbox One consoles out there. You know, where PlayStation VR is like anywhere between five, maybe a generous es generous estimate is 10 million, okay? And there's 100 million PlayStation VRs out there. So the saturation among install base and stuff is a lot higher. And just in units is a lot higher than Connect for Connect 2.0, the big failure of 2013 than it is for PlayStation VR, all right? But with all that said, with all that said, this should be a non-issue, but it's become one. How did it become one? None for not only, not only should it not have become a big issue, but it shouldn't even been addressed this year. But why? Because of Phil Spencer. <laughs> I mean, number one, the general idea of PlayStation VR, it's a feature that even though it doesn't have high saturation, it's starting to get pick up some legs, just a little bit of legs right now. You know what I'm saying? As it's getting cheaper and more people are jumping into it, right? Now's not the time to crap on the platform. Just say you don't have it. Like Paris said, we ain't got it right now, right? But then to make matters worse, to throw salt in the wound, right? You say that VR ain't worth the time and effort for your consumer base, but then you celebrate the fact that you're playing Half-Life Alyx before the rest of the world. So it's good for you, Phil, but it ain't good enough for everybody else. <laughs> Look, here's the deal. Here's a question I gotta, I gotta ask y'all some serious questions here. And I see a lot of people say, this is not a nothing burger or whatever. No, them not having VR, is a nothing burger, but Phil is a problem, okay? Why is it always about him? I mean, we gotta ask ourselves, gamers, and Xbox brethren, I gotta ask you a question. What are we selling here? Are we selling a product or Phil Spencer? The lack of VR, you know what I'm saying? The solidification of that should have been released in a statement to GameIndustry.biz, like how they did earlier this year when they talked about how the first party developers were gonna focus on stuff uh, solely for their ecosystem. It should have been put in a press release to them. Phil should have said, you know what? We don't have any plans to elaborate on right now. This should have been sent in a statement to them next year. Bada boom, bada bing. Phil, shut the hell up for the rest of 2019, okay? I mean, we really gotta ask ourselves, and, it's, and, and it brings me back to something that I said earlier this year after the Crackdown 3 fallout that I predicted, all right? And I said, Xbox has resigned themselves to the fact under Phil Spencer that they're gonna sell you on community opposed to quality. And that's the big problem here. And that has to stop, okay? This should have been, again, put in a statement from Xbox, not Phil Spencer, GameIndustry.biz or whoever, but bundled with some other good news. Hey, here goes some spec features here, and here goes some games coming here. Oh, and by the way, to help bring you this stuff, we're right now at launch, not going to release with place, uh, with, uh, I mean, with VR for Scarlet, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, never say never, More stay tuned. You know what I'm saying? And left it at that, left it at that. But see, 
at the height of all of the issues communicative wise from xbox it's uh, at the center of it is phil spencer you know what i mean and i find it funny that my same xbox brethren they're mad at at at, at jeff keegley over him being so embedded and his thought process being so embedded in the game awards even though it's his awards but you got Phil Spencer stumbling all over himself and messing up the mind share to help elevate your product of choice to help it get bigger support and help it get um, su uh, subsidized, help subsidize the games that you want coming in the future with more people coming on board to the ecosystem. He's messing that all up. And all he got to do is shut the hell up. But everything's about Phil. He shows up at XO19. Oh, I'm listening to you, even though he has Obsidian showing the kiddiest game that, <laughs> that they've ever shown in their 20 plus year history. You know what I'm saying? And now this. PlayStation is having a hell of a time in 2019. This is the year for you to do your game shows and shut the hell up as much as you can. If Phil Spencer wants to speak, it needs to be heavily scripted, heavily guarded. No more interviews until Scarlet releases him sending out chunks and pieces and bits via Xbox um, uh, uh, videos and stuff like that. That's it. He shouldn't say anything else until Scarlet releases or, or E3, period. Because I, I don't get this. I don't know why Phil thinks he can be void of the mindshare issues and be successful, but he better figure out quick and fast that he can. And I said from your boy MM2K, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below, because like I always tell you, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Hey, yo, check me out on the Best Damn Podcast. We run that every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check me out on Scram Punks via PNTS Network. We run that um, every Wednesday around 9.30 on your homeboy Dirk Grigity's channel. And lastly, check me out on hndc.live for live game streams and more commentary. With that said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.